if we move on from the rep ranges, and 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 the third question that I want to really bring up in this confusion space of intermittent fasting and time restricted eating. Now I know where you stand on the time restricted eating, but most women are getting confused on whether intermittent fasting and time restricted eating are the same thing. Are they the same thing? And what do we recommend? They are definitely not the same thing. So we look at intermittent fasting. There's lots of different avenues to take when we're looking at intermittent fasting. We look at um, holding your fast till noon or after. And so you have like a four hour eating window. And in that four hour eating window, there are no real restrictions on what you're eating. We see some people are doing a 12 12, where they're 12 hour overnight fast and 12 hours of, a, of an eating window. Again, no real confines around what they're eating in that 12 hour. You could have a, um, a 16 hour fast. So with intermittent fasting, there's no real identification of circadian rhythm. Mm -hmm. When we're looking at time-restricted eating, we're looking at fueling the body when it needs to be fueled and then having an overnight fast. Mm -hmm. So time-restricted would be you get up and as a woman, you're having breakfast or not full breakfast, but something to eat within like a half an hour after you wake up to drop your cortisol signal to hypothalamus that there's some nutrition coming in. And then maybe you go training, then you come home, have your real breakfast, and then you're eating on regular, like you're having your meals and your snacks, and then you have dinner and you don't have anything after dinner. You stop eating with dinner being over. So it might be six, seven, seven thirty at night. So you have around two hours before bed. Mm -hmm. And then you have a 12 hour, it could even be a 14 hour fast because you stop eating at seven thirty. And maybe you don't get up if you're lucky enough till nine, and then you have something at 930. But most people can do an 11 or 12 hour fast overnight. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we call time restricted eating. Okay, so then time restricted eating is the same thing as really eating around your circadian clock. Yes, exactly. Okay, hallelujah that we have defined that because that is a, a question I get on the daily. So when would intermittent fasting be appropriate for someone? Is there ever a time where someone that might be overweight and they have a hard time counting calories, would you recommend it for any specific reason? No, for men and women, no. Because we look at the population research that's coming out in um, overweight, sedentary, obese, like lots of different studies in that, looking at early versus late breaking a fast. We see individuals who break their fast by 8, 8.30 in the morning, and then they stop eating around 4 or 5 in the afternoon, get the benefits of what we think about with intermittent fasting. They have more metabolic control, more blood glucose control, which comes in the metabolic control. They are improving their lean mass. They're improving neuroplasticity. We're getting more autophagy because they have that overnight fast and they're working with their circadian rhythm. Mm -hmm. We see people, men and women, who hold their fast till noon or after, and then they end up having uh, a later eating window. So they might not finish eating till 7, 30, 8, 8, 30 at night. Oh, I'm already in bed. Yeah. <laughs> but there is no change. There's no metabolic change. There's no increase in autophagy. There is an increase in um, cortisol. Baseline cortisol goes up because it's a stress. It's an incredible stress on the body to wake up and try to go through the day without fuel. Because if you're thinking about, okay, I finished eating at 8 p.m. and then I'm not going to eat again until noon, that's mm -hmm. a very, very long time for the body not to have fuel. And I put it to people, I'm like, would you take your car out on the motorway on E and try to see how far you can get before you get to a gas or petrol gas station? There are some people who say, yeah, I'd do that. I do that all the time. But most people won't do that because they know what's going to happen to the car. It's just going to, and they're going to be stuck. So we have to think about our bodies, right? But yeah. it's not only about, so many people focus on calories. They don't think about nutrient density. Yeah. So when you are choosing in your eating window, you want it to be nutrient dense. So that's looking exactly at, at removing ultra processed, 
taking care of your gut microbiome, eating lots of lean proteins, doing the 80-20 rule, right? If you need a calorie deficit, well, that's when you are really conscious on what you're eating for dinner. Maybe mm -hmm. you have a 100, 150 calorie deficit at dinner, and then that feeds forward to a calorie deficit and improves your parasympathetic responses overnight. The other thing about your circadian rhythm is we have hormone pulses throughout the day that is reliant on light and food. So if we're not eating, then we're, we're offshooting our hormone pulses. So this means our appetite hormones are skewed, our testosterone or estrogen, they're skewed, our luteinizing hormone pulse is skewed. So we're creating a lot of dysfunction in the body. So we're looking at that population research, they're going, okay, well, part of this is because there's a misstep in hormonal control that is supposed to be part of our normal wake up and sleep cycle. Mm -hmm. Food is food and light are the two most powerful ways of resetting your circadian rhythm. So if you're holding a fast and then you're just eating in the afternoon, you're shifting as if you're doing a night shift. Yeah. And we see the literature out there how bad night shift has an impact on overall health and well-being.